Have you been working on your food storage? Have you been stocking up for a while? And do you have ingredients that you just don't know what to do with? Stick around, I'm gonna show you how you can use your food storage to create yummy gourmet meals. Today, these food storage recipes are inspired by Jan Jackson. This is her book, The 100 Day Pantry, Quick and Easy Gourmet Meals. When people begin to feel threatened or insecure, we stock up on canned goods. But we often don't really have a plan for turning those cans into tasty, appealing meals. The ingredients that she uses in the book are ingredients that you can find at any grocery store. And when you start cooking like this, make sure you have the can opener. Are you ready? Aprons on, let's go. All right, I have my basket here. I have my post-it notes with the ingredients for each recipe, and we're gonna shop our shelves. This recipe is barbecued chicken with fruit. So I'm gonna need some chicken broth, and I always grab from the top, and then we work our way down. This is how I rotate. So one can chicken broth. We need canned chicken. So chicken breast in water, and this is this is five ounces. All right, I'm gonna do two of these. So it's a 10 ounce can, two chicken breasts. Can of pineapple tidbits. Bam. Okay, we do need rice for this recipe. So grab yourself a bag of rice. And a few of these recipes call for rice, so we're just gonna cook up a bunch of this. Mandarin oranges. This is 11 ounce can that we need for this recipe. And then we're gonna need some barbecue sauce. So over here I have all our barbecue sauces. So you could grab your sugar-free barbecue sauces, whatever you wanna use, barbecue sauce. Let's make the barbecue chicken with fruit. For the rest of this recipe, we're gonna need a fourth cup of the dried bell peppers, and then another fourth cup of the chopped dried onions. Okay, here is how the dried onion looks. And here's the dried green bell pepper. Look at that, they're so light and airy. Oh my gosh, this stuff's great. Now, if you wanna use everyday vegetables for this recipe, just replace the dried vegetables with the double amount of fresh. To this saucepan, we're gonna add our rice. So one and one fourth cup. We're gonna add our chicken broth to this. Get that to a boil and then a simmer and we'll put a top on that. So we're gonna dump everything into this pan and we're not draining anything. That is because we need that liquid. We need this liquid to cook up our dry vegetables. There goes our green peppers and our onions. And then we're going to put our barbecue sauce. And that is it, you guys. We are just waiting for our rice to cook and then we will just serve this on top. So this is gonna heat through and that's gonna help reconstitute the peppers and the onions. And then you have dinner. You'll be surprised how fast that the freeze-dried vegetables reconstitute. It's pretty amazing. And they're still fresh as when they were picked and freeze-dried. That's what's so great about it. Okay, here is the barbecue chicken with fruit. We have that and we have the rice. It was amazing how fast this cooked up, you guys. I could say, what, 15 minutes? You were just waiting on the rice and we were just heating this through. Those onions and those green peppers they reconstituted in no time. Let's dish up. That's nice and hot. Make sure I get a little bit of everything on there. Oh yeah. And this recipe serves six. All right, I got a little bit of everything on my fork. Let's give this a taste. Mm, mm, mm. You would never know that this was from your long-term and your short-term food storage. And of course, you can make it healthier with basmati rice. I think what I used was jasmine. And there you go, your first food storage dinner. Yeah. Next, we're gonna make chicken broccoli with Alfredo. So we're gonna need canned chicken again. I'm gonna grab two cans of the chicken breast. Chicken breast going in. And I need chicken broth. So we're gonna grab up here. 
boom. Then we need Alfredo sauce. So we have lots of Alfredo down here. So Alfredo sauce. Oh, we need canned mushroom. So right here's these down here, my mushrooms. Six ounces, this is four, we'll just do two. And these ones are the pieces and stems. I think you can get them in different ways. Um, I grabbed this on a really great sale, so we're gonna do pieces and stems. I'm gonna grab some cream of mushroom soup. So we're gonna start up here. This needs to get rotated through first. So cream of mushroom and linguine. I think I have one package of linguine. If I don't, we'll just use spaghetti. Linguine, I've got one. Okay, so we need that. One of the recipes calls for Parmesan cheese. I think it might be this one, so we'll grab this now. All right. Let's go make some chicken broccoli alfredo. To finish off this recipe, we're gonna need a half cup of dried broccoli and some salt and pepper. Here's the freeze-dried broccoli. It's light and airy. We actually freeze-dried some uh, like about a week and a half ago in our Harvest Right freeze dryer and it turned out really good. So we are freeze drying a bunch of stuff for you and you will see that real soon. For an everyday meal, just replace the dried broccoli with one cup fresh or frozen and omit the broth. And cook the linguine separately and serve chicken mixture on top of pasta. Okay, to our pan, we're just gonna dump everything in, which is nice. This time the recipe doesn't say not to drain the canned chicken. Oh boy, do I drain it or not drain it? Okay, the chicken is undrained. I went through all her recipes and she specifies if it's undrained or not. The jar of Alfredo sauce, can of the chicken broth, mushrooms, and I drained those. And the broccoli. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Yeah, it looks like a half cup. I know I cracked pasta, that's a naughty thing, but I want it to fit in this pan. So it's going in, turn it on. So we're gonna mix this up and simmer until the linguine is done. Oh, I do want some salt and pepper in it. We wanna make sure our pasta gets seasoned, right? Okay, we're gonna let this simmer and do its thing. Hey, it is there, so now I'm gonna dish this up. This looks so good. It serves four to six. Mm, gotta get that broccoli in here. Oh yeah. Yum. Nice and hot. Can you see that broccoli? Oh yeah. That's nice and soft. It's, that cooked quick too. Now let's give it a taste test. All right, I wanna taste the broccoli first. Fresh broccoli, so good. Mm -mm. All right, now, I already know that my linguine is gonna have a little bit of a bite to it because I wasn't sure if I should drain the chicken and the mushrooms. Mm. It was really confusing because some recipes it said don't drain, drain, undrain. So I'll make a little note not to drain the mushrooms or the chicken. That way the linguine can soak it up. But this is still edible. It just has a little more bite to it. It's so good. The broccoli is delicious. It's because they freeze dry at the peak of the vegetable. So you're good to go. This is so good, you guys. Your kids can make this. This is so easy and it's delicious. I gotta put this one down too. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Let's move on to recipe number three. Next is Tuscan supper. So we're gonna need some corkscrew pasta. And I have this rotini that looks corkscrew. I hope that's the right kind because that's where we're gonna use. So a box of this. And we're gonna need a can of Great Northern Beans. More mushroom. Veggie broth. And the Parmesan cheese, which I already grabbed already. We need cream of mushroom soup. It's 
another can of that. A can of diced tomatoes. Here I have petite, diced, and crushed. Um, and down here are stewed, but I need a can of diced. And a can of green beans. So here I have French cut and then regular cut. Um, we'll go with the regular cut. So we used all the green beans that were right here. So now I'll just open up a new one and grab a can of green beans. All right, I'll share with you the rest of the ingredients that we need. So let's go make some Tuscan soup. For the remaining of the ingredients, you're gonna need the dehydrated chopped onions and Italian seasoning. When using everyday ingredients, just substitute the dehydrated chopped onion with two thirds cup normal onion. This is another dump one, no draining. So you'll need your green beans, your great northern beans, your mushrooms, diced tomatoes, cream of mushroom soup, your 14 ounces of veggie broth, one third cup of dehydrated onion, one tablespoon of the Italian seasoning, and one half cup of the corkscrew pasta. We're gonna simmer until the pasta is done. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. And look how much it made. It made a ton. So it reminds me of like a minestrone soup, but with cream and mushroom soup in, so it makes it creamy. All right, we, well, we're gonna have to taste this. This is perfect on a cold day. Now add your cheese to it. Tuscan supper. Mmm. -mm. Okay, now we have to taste it. I know I'm going to enjoy it, but the fact that it has cream and mushroom soup in it intrigues me. Okay. Hot. Hot, hot. Mm. Have you ever put like cream and mushroom soup in your like minestrone? This is what it reminds me of. And I really like it with the corkscrew pasta. I think we're going to be making this a lot. And this serves six to eight people. This is good. Mmm, mmm. Yep, this one's a keeper. Next is Sorta Stroganov. We're gonna need canned beef. I've got a can of roast beef, we'll do this. This is from um, Costco. It's probably more than what we need, it's 12 ounces, but this is what I have. So we have beef, and then we need mushroom. So I'm gonna grab two more mushroom. And then we need evaporated milk. I always go by what needs to be used first. Yep, okay. Evaporated milk. And we need cream of mushroom soup. So we we'll use what's on top first. And bam, and that's coming in. And here are the other ingredients that you're gonna need. You need one ounce of bacon crumbles, Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper, paprika, instant rice, but we're gonna use the rice that we had with our barbecued chicken with fruit, some dehydrated sour cream powder, freeze-dried celery, and we're using the dehydrated onions, chopped onions, and garlic powder. Here's what the freeze-dried celery looks like. So airy, so light. Here is what the freeze-dried sour cream looks like. Look at that, isn't that neat? For the everyday meal, just place the dried ingredients with double the amount of fresh. Add your evaporated milk in. And then you're going to whisk together the evaporated milk with your sour cream powder. That looks good. Now we're gonna add all the other ingredients except for the rice. So we're gonna add our beef in, and this I did drain. And then we need our mushrooms undrained. I think I might just use one can for right now instead of the two, because we you need six ounces and this is four. And then the cream of mushroom soup. Our ounce of bacon crumbles. One fourth cup of the dried onion. 
and one fourth cup of the dried celery, salt, pepper. This is to taste. A teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of paprika, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Okay, we're gonna bring this to a boil. So if you had your instant rice, when this would get to a boil, you would add your instant rice in, stir it up, cover, and then reduce the heat and simmer until the rice was done. But our rice is already done, so we could add that in at the end, or we could just put some rice on our plate and top this with it. Either way you wanna go about doing it. All right, we're gonna get this to a boil and then simmer. Okay, here is the stroganoff, and look at that. Look at the vegetables, all the meat, the mushrooms. Okay, let's dish this up. Oh yeah, make sure I get a lot of that celery in. Oh yeah, our meat, oh. It really does smell good. And this is the stroganoff. She calls it sorta stroganoff. She says this serves four people. I'm sorry, I think you could stretch this quite a bit to six, maybe even more, but definitely it could feed more than four. There we go. This is a good bite. Hmm. Wow. It has a very rich flavor to it. I think the flavor would be different depending on the types of canned beef that you're using. I do like this, but I think I would do it without the bacon crumbles. I think it just adds a, a flavor that I'm not used to in stroganoff, but this is good. This is very good. Yum. These have been great so far. Mmm, mmm. Celery, that celery is so good. On to the next recipe. All right, we're gonna make corn chowder. You're gonna need vegetable broth. Bam. Two cans of diced potatoes or any potatoes that you have. If they're sliced, you can dice them up. So we're gonna put that in there. Or if you wanted to use freeze dried, you can. Um, but I'm following this recipe as is. And then you're going to need two cans of corn. Boom. And one can of cream corn, which we actually have because I make a really yummy um, corn chowder that's so good I'll link it so I do have cream style corn the other ingredients you'll need is seasoned salt dehydrated chopped onions Worcestershire sauce pepper sugar and bacon crumbles for everyday meals you can replace the dried onion with one cup of fresh okay we're gonna put everything in our pan no draining. So our potatoes, our corn, our cream corn, our veggie broth. Add your bacon crumbles in. It's about 2.5 ounces of it. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Of course you could use dehydrated or freeze dried bacon. Then a half a cup of your dried onions. Then you'll need a tablespoon of sugar one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Then you'll need a teaspoon of seasoned salt and then a fourth a teaspoon of pepper. Combine all this together and heat it through and you have corn chowder. Now I could be picky on this. I have a corn chowder recipe. I'll link it below that my family absolutely loves. So we'll see how this one compares. This corn chowder serves six people. Okay, let's give this a try. This is better than what I thought it was gonna taste like. Honestly, I'm a little nervous about this one. But let me taste it with the potatoes. It's good. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, hmm, maybe because my soup recipe is creamy and this isn't. And that's probably what's throwing me off. I think they were all really good. I'm excited.
excited for the family to try them. That's the test, that's the test. Well friends, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you start using your food storage, especially if you got any dehydrated or freeze dried food. They're so easy to work with, just start working with them. All right, let me know in the comments below which recipes are you excited to try. I will have a link for Jan's book down in the description below. Great way to start cooking with food storage and have your kids start learning to cook. Have them make these meals, so easy. All right, friends, check out the two videos I have for you on cooking with food storage. Thank you so much for joining me, and we will see you soon. Bye.